beginning of day two, we the weather is considerably better. It's not as windy, the sun is out. It's beautiful. Uh, we decided this was going to be our opportunity to go down to Ocracoke Island. There's a ferry that uh, the state of North Carolina runs that is free. A uh, lesson that we have learned is figure out how far, how long it's going to take you to get here. And get here about come, really on the early. 30 minute mark. So like they leave at like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, weather permitting. So you really want to be here about like 10 30, 11 30, 9 30. We're now sitting in line with a whole bunch of cars and we probably are going to be here for about an hour. It uh, looks like there's a place next door that we're going to may, maybe Take walk over turns. to and and check out. Uh, we're, we're looking forward to getting to Ocracoke. Uh, it took us about 40, 45 minutes to get down here to this. But once you get in the line, you're in the line. So there's no, what I said. There's no getting out to run back to the coffee shop or something like that. Uh, lesson learned. So we're sharing it with you so that uh, you don't have to learn the lesson the hard way like we did. <laughs> So we've learned a little bit about the uh, the ferry, ferry ride. Experience. Um, we got a, had a really nice conversation with a couple of the guys that work the ferry, and uh, the ferry takes this particular boat takes about an hour and a half yeah. to yeah. ride. Apparently, um, they're all a little bit different. Yeah, this one's a little bit slower. It has to go further out into the sound. Uh, it's a little because, bit bigger boat. Yeah, because it's got a um, some sand shoals that they've got to avoid. So. Um, don't be in a hurry. <laughs> mm -mm. Uh, it took us a while to get going, uh, but we're finally here. We're pulling up to Ocracoke uh, Island right now. I said it's about a 13 mile ride down to the actual little town. Um, and we're gonna, probably on the way back. We'll stop at the pony pens and look at the horses, uh, but we're hungry now. And uh, <laughs> We have eaten all the car snacks. We yes. came down from, we went and sat up in the, um, little wow. lounge area and um, mainly because we're we're like in the middle of the of the ferry so we're looking at you know on all sides at cars maybe if we were on an end or the front we would have maybe stayed we'd in the stay car enjoyed the ride but we went out as a very comfortable lounge um, and we hung out and the kids read books and played games and watched mostly watched the fair watched other ferries go by watch birds yeah. and went to the front deck, into the back deck, into the front deck, into the back deck. They, they did say there are a number of ferries that run, they run as late as midnight. Um, but they they but start running less and less, like less run in the morning early, more like they're doubled up, their shifts the double the in the middle of the day and then less right. run at night. Start, starting at six, it starts to get a little more thin, so you may have to wait a little bit longer. So uh, we'll, we're going to check out Ocracoke and see what, uh, see what all the hype's about. The ferry ride has definitely been interesting yeah. and windy. So. Whew, very very windy. windy. Yes. If you go in the front, you'll get blown off. Yes. <laughs> it was a good time. Alright, All right, so we are now on, in line for the ferry back from Ocracoke. So I thought we'd share a little bit of our thoughts on it. Uh, one other, one thing I do want to mention about the ferry ride, we were a little misunderstood about how it works. They don't leave at, at, like, at the hour. It's just a bunch of boats that run as often as they can. Um, Depending on weather and tides and sand shifts. Yes. And so uh, we had heard as we were leaving one of the places at Ocracoke that because of wind and weather, they were shutting down a couple of the boats today, so there's less ferries going back. Uh, luckily, as we arrived here at the ferry landing, they were loading a boat, so we are, I don't know, probably the eighth or tenth car, so we'll get on the next boat whenever that happens to be. We just don't know when that is. We would highly recommend finding at a visitor center 
or uh, your motel or wherever you can be to yes. find this visit Ocracoke New North Carolina walking map and directory yes it has all the places to eat all the shops all the, like walking around all the visitor kind of cool things yes because the, the, the island is really just it's this little village yeah um, it, there's not much to it and when you drive in you're like oh let's let's eat right there because that we don't know anything else and yeah. um, and the food was great and we enjoyed it but it yes, was we did and somebody had told me that they enjoyed Howard's so as we pulled in we were hungry so that's where we stopped we stopped at Howard's I, I got the um, tuna the tuna sandwich uh, the teriyaki tuna sandwich it was good it, it was it and was I got a fresh fish sandwich it was delicious yes it was um, a little on the pricey side um, but you also got to remember you're in a tiny little village oh she wants to show yeah, I mean this is kind of cool the kids food came on frisbees that then they got to keep with them yes and, and it was a really neat place yes um, and probably price point almost anything would have been about the same price point. I mean, you know, these you have to think there's just not a grocery store. The trucks that come over have to come over on ferry. Yep. You know, the beer, the everything is coming over on the ferry. It's probably pretty carte blanche across right. the island. We just probably would have gone in more first. Because I felt like everybody that was on the ferry with us Stopped was at that restaurant. Yes. It was like, well, we probably should have gone and, into. And, there, and there, there are a few other restaurants on the island. There's a lot of neat little gift shops. Um, artists, uh, lots of artist stuff and picking and uh, jewelry and shells and yes, so really cool stuff. And there was, you know, just some neat. There was a maritime um, little tiny museum. Yeah, we had stopped at this little what they call it, the, like the city center, um, where you, there's a little bit of parking there, so you walk around and look at a number of the different shops. And there was the the Kitty Hawk kite shop there, uh, a little thrift store. And there was like this little fishing museum out on the pier. It's kind of neat to see how they, they had relied a lot on fishing for this little island, um, which makes a lot of sense when you think about where it is uh, on the coast. So we enjoyed that. And then there's the, the lighthouse. Yeah. Uh, this is a, still a functioning lighthouse, uh, which I think is becoming more and more rare. It's the oldest still functioning lighthouse in North Carolina. It was the old. It's the oldest lighthouse. Period. It was the yes. first one built. So, and it just happens to still be functioning, but it's 201 yeah. years old. So it was really neat that we actually got to walk into it. Couldn't climb it, but you could walk in, and there was a gentleman there to answer any questions. The uh, the keeper's house is in the middle of remodeling. It was damaged during uh, Hurricane Dorian, Dorian, if I remember correct. Uh, so they decided while they're repairing it, they're going to raise it up four feet in order to try and help prevent it from being damaged during the next hurricane, which makes a lot of sense. Um, so that was that was kind of neat. Uh, I tell you that it's a neat little island. Uh, it's it's a challenge to get here, so my suggestion is try and get to the the ferry, the ferry early. As, as early as you can, so that you don't feel rushed and you don't feel like when the weather shifts. Oh my gosh, I got to try and get out of here because uh, that's kind of a little bit how we feel right now. The, the, the clouds rolled in, the wind has picked up, and we feel a little bit. Like well, we you kind of felt rushed. We kind of a lot to of today, yeah, just so. because we hurried to get to the ferry and then we we weren't on the first ferry and a ferry had a mechanical failure so it right. wasn't running and it just it just took a lot longer to get down here oh one thing i do want to mention um they do this is one of the places on the outer banks where you can see the wild horses but they're not really wild uh, these are these have been pinned because they used to be wild but they were worried that they were going to be struck by cars so they have now pinned them there's a place where you can stop again kind of feeling like we got rushed because we were trying to get down here they had just started to feed them and they all went back into the barn you can kind of see two um, over a fence and we did see some as we we came in yes. that you, the pen is very obvious it's, and apparently it's like acres and acres and acres of pen right. but so we were lucky that there was some even a few up yeah. close um, <laughs> Yeah, and we did also ride around. There is a national park campground uh, on the island. We rode through it. Uh, uh, yeah, it's <laughs> a uh, more primitive camping than yes. I am um, comfortable with. So no utilities. Um, there's a dump station um, across the street. The bathhouses do not have hot water. 
So you're talking about cold showers unless you bring your own propane for uh, propane uh, water heater and fill in your tanks. So uh, not really our cup of tea, but if you're into that, there's a, there's quite a few. It's only and 20, it was uh, $28. So. Beautiful. I mean, you were like in the middle of the dunes. Right. Like it was yeah. it was pretty. So you walk over the dunes. So. Right. Oh, no, I, 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 I like Ocracoke. It's a neat place. I'm glad we came. Um, my, I, I'm just going to keep staying. Try and get here early. So that you can you can enjoy it and not feel rushed through through your day here. Because and, and I don't think I realize, and you might have just because you did more of the research pre coming, but that the ferry boat itself was going to be an hour and a half ride. I, that's not. I did not. Everything I saw said forty five minutes to an hour, and an hour and a half plus is much longer than what I had anticipated. So we're talking to one of the guys. He said they have dredged a new channel through the sand. But they, that should knock it back down to under an hour. But they're waiting on uh, the, the, the Corps of the Engineers markers. have done it. They're waiting on the uh, the Coast Guard to certify the channel and mark it with buoys and markers. So maybe it'll be a little bit shorter at some point, you know, in 2024. But um, it's not that way right now, as of first of April. Well, and um, just because the sheriff guy just drove by us it made me think remember too that we had gotten um as we came through um yes. coming up coming up the um there's a place where there's a washout yeah so this road was actually closed last week the ferries were not running because there had been a storm uh there was too much water and sand on the road they had opened it back up I, i've been following a facebook group i'll, I'll link it in here um the Facebook group that the Department of Transportation updates the road status. But literally, as we were coming up, coming back from toward the ferry, there's a sign that said, um, "Water." I mean, on there road. was a, water on road, but there was a, a sheriff's guy stopping people and saying it's passable, but there's swells coming over the dunes. There's salt water on the road. So drive, one, drive slow. Yeah, there's waves coming. Yeah, the second thing was he wanted me to make sure when we get back to the campsite, I get a water hose out and I rinse everything off underneath. Brake rotors, um, exhaust, everything, everything needs, the salt water needs to get rinsed off of it. So I was appreciative of that, but uh, it was a little scary. It was a little scary. Yeah, you want to check the uh, check that Facebook group, to make sure that it is uh, it's passable before you even make this journey down here, because it's a long way down. Just to be turned around and told, sorry, we're closed. Park's closed. So, yeah. All uh, right, we'll see what tomorrow has in store. Um, we're gonna head back to the campground now. It is gonna be too late to try and do the Hatteras Lighthouse today. By the time we ride an hour and a half back on the ferry, and uh, the um, kids do have the Junior Ranger stuff for all the Hatteras stuff, so yeah, we'll so we'll, we'll probably do that on the ferry ride, and, and tomorrow maybe we'll, come down uh, and get there. Yep, yeah, come down and do that. We'll probably hit some of the other national things, kind of working our way back up, and sort of do the middle chunk of the islands. We started north yesterday, south today. We'll hit the middle tomorrow. Yeah. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.